Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us and uh, welcome to today's Caseware webinar. Today, we are looking at the Caseware Working Papers 2022 release. Uh, my name is Tom Jeffrey. I'm one of the Education and Media Technicians at Caseware UK. And I'm joined by our product manager for Working Papers and IXVRL, Yanni Conradi. Uh, Yanni is going to be taking you through the content today or some of the content today. Um, in terms of the uh, the updates that are included for uh, working papers. We do have, um, during the second half, a presentation for you uh, for IDEA. Uh, that's uh, going to be delivered to you by our head of data analytics, James Lachlan. Unfortunately, James can't be with us live today, but he's uh, pre-recorded that for you. Uh, and you can submit any questions um, to us uh, to do with IDEA and working papers, and we'll uh, do our best to answer those live and any that we don't answer live, we'll get back to you on after the session and also include a Q&A document on the help site when we upload the recording. Um, so uh, as you can see there, you've got the option to use the Q&A on the toolbar, slightly different between desktop and mobile, and um, pop those in there. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. As I say, any idea questions that you have, please do submit those. While we don't have James with us live, we'll do our best to answer them and uh, forward any on to him that we're unable to answer live. And as I say, the recording will be on the help site and on the YouTube channel in the next couple of days. So that's the end of the housekeeping. I'll pass you over to Yanni and we'll get started. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining for our webinar on the latest working papers released. Let's have a quick look at the agenda. So I'll take you through the upgrading process for the Working Papers 2022. Um, quick look at the new features and fixes that we've introduced. Then we're gonna have the idea demo and then if time permitting some questions and answers at the end. Okay, so the new software, the new release for Working Papers was Working Papers 2022.00.179. And then we've also released the template bundle with that, which is TO 141. Now, if we look at the timeline of what we've done before and after releasing Working Papers. So we've released Working Papers beginning of December. Going a while back, we've released the, our last corporate EPAC. Um, before August, then we released our last, um, sorry, that was a tax EPAC uh, before August, our last corporate EPAC for corporate clients and IFRS was 40604 at the beginning of October, and then the Charity and Academy EPAC 40603, middle of October. Now you'll see that we've got a T there next to 40604 is because we've released a T pack as well with the EPAC now, a TPAC is if we release new mapping codes for that particular template, then you need to install the TPAC with the EPAC. Otherwise, you know, you're not gonna get all the new disclosures coming out. Okay, so the importance of showing you guys this is in beginning of January, we released our new EPAC 40601, or 40701, sorry, with another TPAC. And then we've also, we are planning to release in March, the next corporate back for 702. And then uh, further on will be the Chadits and Academies. But the point I wanna make here is that you cannot install our new EPAC for 701 if you're not up to date with your previous EPACs. So if you haven't installed 4604 plus the template uh, TPAC, then you can't install or you should not install for 701. Um, the same goes for any other EPAC and template. So you can't install the charity for 701 if you're not up to date with 40603. Now, if you're not sure if you are up to date with the latest EPACs, you can go on our help site. It will show you what was the latest EPAC when we released it. You can call our support and they can check for you. But this is why we release the template bundle as well with Working Papers 2022. So this template bundle for TO141 contains all the previous EPACs all in one. So if you're not sure, you can just install your template bundle TO141 with Working Papers and then you're up to date and then you can install all the new EPACs coming out. Okay, so we did go th last year through a rebranding exercise. So you'll see new branding coming out. Um, what I wanna make is when you do point out here, if you do install working papers, 
is the release documentations. So clicking on the view release documentation will take you to our new website, our new help site, and all your installation notes for working papers will appear underneath there. It's just everything at one place. There's also some, um, oh yeah, so for all the new features, I'll point out, you know, some of the fixes and new features coming up, but for a comprehensive list of everything is the new feature guide um, under the working papers tab link there. And then also what I want to point out here is the case for working papers interactive guide. So this is a guide that was made by our EMT team. Well, Tom did make this one and it's quite comprehensive. So for new starters, we do recommend to go through that. Or if you just forgot about how you do something or what is something relevant, um, go through it again. So just to point out what it contains. So it has an int intro where it will talk about some initial questions for you, you know, all your licensing options, what do you need to do? How do you need to register? Um, installing the applications, amending permissions for your users, installing the templates. Um, under case with data store, it will talk about what is a data store. Um, it will take you through, do you actually need it? And then if you do, how to create it. Within the working papers overview, it takes you through our accounts advanced template and it'll show you what every button is doing, you know, press there, this will come up, press there for this. And then at the end, it will have a little quiz just to test your understanding of what you've been through. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the new features coming out or that, that came out in Working Papers 2022. So for cloud integration, um, our hybrid cloud firms can now access their cloud integrated engagement files from the new case for cloud menu on the Working Papers file open page. Okay, so for our cloud users, if you have installed it, you would see there's just now a cloud tab as well. The idea integration, and James will take you through in his recording a little bit later on, or well, soon with it, but your idea smart analyzer and your idea projects are now accessible from the working papers ribbon. And he does point that out. Okay, so for automated automatic documents, um, we've added the context selector to uncorrect misstatement type documents in consolidated files. So users can now select the entity within the consolidated entity structure as context for the document. On hybrid cloud, documents can now be assigned to multiple query author IDs. And also when integrating web working papers with a cloud site, the URL containing the web protocol, HTTP or HTTPS, no longer prevent integration until they are fully removed. Well, manually removed, sorry. For imports, so I mean, we, every year we do update the various imports, but for the UK market, so we've got now Sage 50, 2022, QuickBooks 23, and then we've added the option to exclude purchase ledger information from Sage 50, Sage 50 general ledger imports, and also zero imports now include general ledger descriptions for cash flow items. Okay, take you through some of the fixes we've done for Working Papers 2022. So on case view, um, they fix an issue where opening up an adjustment in case view would cause the active user's initials to override the creator's initials. They've also fixed an issue that allowed users to delete milestones in previously locked down engagements using case view. For hybrid cloud, they fixed an issue when you perform a year in close and roll forward on a file that is both cloud integrated and published would not roll forward contact information into the next year's file. So that will be there now. And then fix an issue where in certain working papers versions um, uh, that cause files to be downloaded to a folder level above their intended destination. For data store administration tool, so they fixed an issue that prevented users from connecting to shared stores through working papers if they were created in a version in SQL Server that is no longer supported. On issues, they fixed an issue where new document issues that were created with the role forward and the retain on cleanup options automatically enabled. And then on the interface, um, file, they fix an issue where files recently published and synchronized with cloud 
would display as not fully synchronized in the recent files pane. Okay, then just a quick reminder about our support for Working Papers 2021. So we will withdraw our support for Working Papers 21 on the 31st of May this year. So your Working Papers 21 will still work after this date, but all the EPACs from June onwards will only be in Working Papers 2022. So we do urge you to upgrade as soon as possible. Um, you will get your reminders later on in the year as well before, and we will activate that warning message again in Working Papers a month before if you haven't upgraded. If you have never seen that warning message in Working Papers, well done, that means you've upgraded in time. Okay, so that is it for the fixes and new features. Like I said, you know, if you go onto the help site um, on that list, that, that's a comprehensive list of all the fixes and features done. But I'm going to pass you back to Tom now to show you James's video. And in the Thanks. meantime, I will start looking at some of the questions that came in and answer you guys. Thanks, Yanni. Um, yes, so we have, uh, as I said earlier, James Lachlan unfortunately can't be with us today, but he has pre-recorded his presentation for you. So I'm just going to share my screen and play that for you now. Hello, everyone. My name is James Lachlan and I'm the head of data analytics here at Caseware. And today I'll be taking you through the new data analytics integrations that we've added to the Working Papers 2022 release. Here at Caseware, it's our goal to help you to keep pace with the growing competition and client expectations. And we do that by developing solutions which not only help to create efficiencies within your audit or accounts production tasks, but also provide greater insights to areas of risk and error through the use of intelligent data analytics. As well as being the developer of the Working Papers platform, we're also the developer of the industry-leading data analytics platform, IDEA. And by adopting IDEA, you gain a powerful data analytics toolbox, which has an audit and finance focus that drives additional value to an engagement. IDEA comes complete with pre-built analytics for testing of general ledgers and trial balances, as well as offering the ability to dissect data sets related to other areas of an engagement that may require further investigation, such as accounts payables, accounts receivables, inventory, fixed assets, or payroll. IDEA also offers ad hoc anomaly detection features with the added ability to import data from several sources and allow users to standardize their methodology and use the same approach to data analytics, removing the comp complex processes and limitations inherent to generic spreadsheet software. Up until now, working papers and IDEA have been used to complement each other, but have always been separate platforms. And to address this and to provide greater efficiency, last year with the release of Working Papers 2021, we began integrating IDEA into the Working Papers workflow by providing the ability to export a number of Working Papers databases into IDEA for analysis. This information included trial balance details, journal entries, account mappings and balances, as well as engagement properties and document information to name a few. These databases could be exported directly into IDEA for analysis, the results of which can then be passed back to the Working Papers engagement as a text, Excel or IDEA database file. But there was no clear and integrated workflow between Working Papers and IDEA and no clear path to the available data analytic functions and sampling methods that IDEA offers. So for the Working Papers 2022 release, we set clear goals to enhance these new integrations. We wanted to integrate Working Papers and IDEA for a more unified experience, empower users to utilize the capabilities of IDEA without a training overhead, improve efficiency by reducing time spent working in different platforms, and provide users with the ability to execute IDEA analytics from content within an engagement workflow. And we're pleased to announce that with Working Papers 2022, we've now included further enhancements that help us to achieve these goals. On the Home tab in Working Papers 2022, you will now find a new analytics group, which contains two options or an option which will let you link an engagement file to IDEA and open the platform to allow you to run ad hoc analytics and generate samples, or the second option, which will open the Smart Analyzer section in IDEA to be able to run pre-built analytics within the engagement. And I'd like to take you through a quick demonstration of where this new functionality is located within Working Papers and how it works. So here we are in Working Papers 2022. Uh, as I mentioned previously, here are those new controls that we have on the analytics group on the home tab. Um, before we actually go through those, 
Uh, we just need to think about the data that we're going to analyze. So are we pulling that data in using um, import options within IDEA, so Excel files or CSVs? Um, are we using the uh, accounting software utility, which pulls data from common accounting packages and prepares it for us? Or are we going to use the data that we've uploaded into the engagement? So if we've already uploaded trial balances and general ledger detail files, rather than duplicating effort, we can migrate that data from working papers into IDEA. And the, and the way that we would do that is by going to the engagement tab, and we've got an export option here. And all we need to do is select caseware IDEA. It will then ask us where we want to place the files. So um, I'm going to place them into an IDEA project that I've already pre-prepared. And then all those databases that I mentioned previously, so the trial balances, the account balances, the mappings, uh, the engagement properties, the journal information, all of that is now being uh, exported from working papers and placed into the IDEA project. If we had received uh, an Excel file or a CSV, for example, from the client, then we would uh, automatically then open up idea import that data make sure that it's suitable verify the quality of it um, and then we would come back into the engagement to perform our analysis because the data has come automatically from working papers and we've already verified the quality of that data we can jump over that stage and go straight into the automated workflow so here again it's asking the idea project that we've linked this engagement to and then it will bring up a list of all of the apps that are available for us to run. So we have our risk-based general ledger analysis that we could run, um, but in this case, I want to run the financials app. There are a particular number of individual tests that I want to, to run in line with the, um, with the audit procedures. Um, so I'm going to choose financials. Now it's quite a basic workflow here um, with, with just a, a small number of stages. Um, so I'll just sort of quickly go through what those are. So um, you'll see up at the top here, um, we're in the workflow, as I mentioned, we've also got the description and this describes what the app actually does. So here you can see the financial app comprises a collection of audit tests for the analysis of the general ledger, several important sub ledgers, as well as human resources and payroll. This app enables you to perform standard evaluations and to run specific audit tests to detect issues. Okay, so it's very clear on what it does and gives you a sort of like a, an overview of some of the tests that you'll be able to perform um, within the general ledger and sub ledgers. Um, when you're requesting data from a client, it may be that you need uh, additional information um, in order to be able to run the analytics on top of the data that you would uh, be ordinarily loading into the engagement. So here we can create a data request. We can select here, uh, we want to create a general ledger request. And then it creates this uh, document with a list of all of the fields that the analytics need. And it marks the ones that are mandatory um, so that we know the core fields that would be required and everything else is optional. So let's say for example we weren't able to uh, to access the posted time um, from the client system then it just means that any time related analytics um, will be grayed out when we start running the tests but it doesn't limit us to not being able to run any of the analytics we can mark our progress if we're collaborating sharing tasks um, or it might be that we're performing certain tasks but not all at the same time then we can keep a, a progress of, of where we are um, we've got this standard import routine stage, which is next. Um, and as I said, um, because we pull the data directly from working papers, uh, the, the workflow knows those files and is going to be able to load them and, and transform them ready for um, analysis. And it does the same for our accounting package import utility as well. So it recognizes the files that we're going to use. And then it will ask us to to select which ones apply to the specific um, files that it needs. So here, for example, these are the, the table prefixes that I mentioned before. So G L A M S H. They're the only three that are used in this process. So I can select those like so, uh, and then it will now merge all of those uh, reports together to create one final file, uh, which the app will then reference. Next stage is actually to run the tests. So we can click on the run audit tests here. 
And because it was general ledger information that it's imported and prepared, these are the only analytics that it's actually displaying to us rather than all of the sub ledger analytics as well. So we have particular reports here. So we have a number of different analytical tests. Some of them are based on sort of risk, uh, looking for certain types of occurrence, which might um, indicate uh, more high risk postings. Um, other reports might be trend analysis, which although won't identify specifically um, exceptional records and postings, may give us an overview that if we see certain types of occurrences that um, that then they will uh, highlight areas that we need to focus on so for example um, you know out of balance journal entries or duplicates you know standard exceptional reports whereas um, say something like uh, uh, a, um, summary by account number or combined summary by account combinations um, a more trend analysis and it's up to us to then look up and down and see if there's anything there that looks unusual um, for the purposes of this exercise i'm just going to select those two tests maybe i'll bring in the, the rounded amounts test as well um, you can see here it's it's optional um, input so we can choose the divisor that our rounded test would be based on uh, some of the tests will have optional parameters parameters some are not required and some will be required okay um, next thing to do is then to run the analytics themselves um, and you can see we've got a progress meter over on the right hand side um, and as a test is completed if we have the test selected you'll see that it gives us the results at the bottom right hand side so this test for example has returned zero records so there's no out of balance journal entries in this data set which is great um, at the bottom of the screen here you can see the audit objectives um, this ex explains and describes what this test does and the value it, it provides to the audit with some examples of the type of information that it run against what you would expect to receive out of the end um, of the analytic and uh, some best practice information in some cases as well once the tests have then completed uh, we can close this screen down and go to the next stage in the workflow, which is the analyze audit test results. Now at this stage, some of the data sets might be quite large, so we can actually come out of the workflow, we can launch the idea project, and then we could manually then analyze the data. Maybe we'll generate some samples, um, but some more targeted samples from some of those larger exceptional reports. Um, at this stage, I'm just going to output the results. And the reason that I'm going to do that is so that I can then move those across into the engagement. And you can move, you know, Excel files, PDFs, even idea files over into the project, depending on what, what you want to do with those files. Um, here, if I select the output from the analytics, you'll see that um, it gives us two options here. We can create a print report. Um, which gives a sort of high level view of all of the analytics but doesn't contain all the detail um, or you've got this option here which is what i'm going to use and what this will do is it will export all of those reports into an excel format and it's that that i'm going to move across um, into the engagement so if i open the export folder you'll see here it is in windows um, and if I open up one of these tests, let's go with the rounded amounts as we were talking about that before. Uh, and you'll see here that it's uh, we've got a tab which gives us picks a load of that information from the uh, the run audit test stage. So the name of the test, any parameters that we might have passed, how many results um, were reported at the end, as well as other metadata like who ran the analytics, when were they run, what idea project did they relate to. And then on the second tab, we then have all of the detail. Um, as you can see, it's nicely formatted. Um, so these are the 33 records with, with a rounded amount. And it's up to, up to us to then have a look at these and say, well, you know, are these manual adjustments that we should be looking at? Um, are there any sort of high risk occurrences in there? So if I close this stage down, and I'll have to close the workflow down as well, so I can then interact back with working papers. So if I select those three files there and i've already created an ada results folder specifically in section n here um, so all i need to do is then just move those across and then they'll be given a unique reference and added into the uh, into the engagement itself and that's 
that's from start to end that's sort of your analytical you know your pre pre-built analytical um run through workflow okay if you wanted to work outside of the apps and and uh, make use of some of the other ad hoc capabilities that idea offers as you can see all you need to do is press the launch button and that will automatically open the idea software obviously you need to have that installed on your on your pc as well as working papers um and at this stage you know you can open files and then you can perform certain other analyses in idea we have a dedicated analysis uh, toolbar uh, with a number of very powerful functionalities um, from statistical analysis like benford's law or time series trend analysis um, we've got specific duplicate tests um, standard duplicates fuzzy duplicates we can look at distribution analysis we can merge data sets together we've even got sampling methods within idea as well ranging from monetary unit sampling classical variable attribute uh, systematic interval sampling um, random stratified random um, and even Benford's law by some is used, being used by some firms as a, as a way of generating samples as well um, so a number of uh, very powerful as I said um, data analytic capabilities so hopefully um, that gives you a good understanding of how now working papers and idea can work um, uh, very closely together how it creates a very um, efficient and effective workflow and helps you um, on those more high risk pieces of work and engagements uh, to be able to avail of data analytics that will help you to understand risk and to gain those better assurances over the quality of controls okay so whether you're looking for a library of pre-built analytics or the ability to import data to perform ad hoc data analytics new working papers and idea integrations will provide added value to your engagements if you'd like to learn more about any of the information that i've gone through today please get in touch with your account manager i'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation and i'll now hand back to yanni and tom to continue with today's webinar there we are so uh, a, a, a quite a comprehensive overview of the uh, of the idea platform and its integration with working papers and where you can find it in the new version of working papers as uh, james said in his recording there if you have any questions um then you can uh, if you have any queries about the platform then of course you can submit them here and we'll forward them onto the relevant contact uh, if you want to discuss um acquiring idea um, then speak with your account manager we do have a couple of questions that have come in. We'll just quickly cover those off. And um, uh, I've, I've, we've, um, we've replied in the Q&A panel, so we'll just quickly summarize the questions and answers. Um, first of all, it's, uh, if, you, if you're not seeing any updates or any notifications about new versions of working papers, um, those notifications go to the primary contact within your firm or within your teams. Um, so you can uh, speak with them and they'll be able to forward that on to you. Um, if you're not sure who your uh, primary contact is, then let us know and we can confirm that for you. The other question we had, which uh, was um, uh, upgrading to Working Papers 2022. I'll read the question, actually. So if we upgrade to Working Papers 2022, will this impact our statutory accounts disclosures that we currently have? We have tailored most of our accounts with our auditors. So when we perform a year end roll forward, would we lose all of these tailored disclosures. Um, we have over 200 accounts, so this would uh, be a lot of work to redo all the disclosures for 2022 year ends. Um, good news is uh, simply installing, as Yanni pointed out, simply installing the new Working Papers platform will not have any effect on any accounts or disclosures. Uh, so Working Papers being the base platform, uh, and then your disclosures being prepared within um, uh, templates which sit on top of that platform. So for example, Accounts Advanced, and actually, if you take the Accounts Advanced EPAC updates, you still don't have to apply those to your accounts. So you then have the option to um, accept or dismiss disclosure updates. We have further guidance on those uh, on our help site, but we will also include links to that guidance on the Q&A document, and that will accompany the recording of the webinar. Hopefully that um, covers everything, Yanni. I think I've rather stepped on your toes by answering those questions. Yeah, no, you've covered it quite well. Um, we just had another question coming in uh, asking if we can have the slides. And yeah, sure. If you let us know your name and email address, then we can um, forward the slides on to you. 
Excellent. So we are uh, we've just slightly overrun. So we're just going to go through the wrap up here and um, continue to submit your questions, of course, and we'll get back to you when we can. Um, as you can see, caseware.co.uk forward slash events is where you can see our webinar schedule and you can sign up to attend, as you probably have done for today. Um, on the next slide, we've just got a couple of quick plugs uh, in case you weren't already aware. We have a, a, a client services LinkedIn page that you can follow us on and that will give you updates uh, for latest news within the business and also um, notify you of any upcoming webinars. Uh, Caseware Client Services, uh, Caseware UK Client Services YouTube channel is where we host all of our quick vids and we also have a webinar playlist. So this webinar will be um, winging its way to the webinar playlist either today or tomorrow. Um, and I believe, yes, the next slide is just confirming help.caseware.co.uk. So that's our new help site replacing the old knowledge base. You don't need to log in to use the help site for guidance. Uh, login is just for things like downloads. But if you want to access uh, the article that will contain the Q&A document and recording of this session, uh, then just go to help.caseware.co.uk and you'll see it as uh, one of the latest featured articles. Or you can search for Working Papers webinar and it will be the top result. So that will be hopefully later on today, if not tomorrow. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we hope you've enjoyed the webinar, found it useful. Take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye.